everybody, it's Iron Matt Hyde, why the man here. Hopefully everybody's doing well on this wonderful Friday afternoon, Friday evening, depending on where you are located. With that being said here, though, I do have a uh, pretty active weekend here. And we'll kind of start out with the winter side of things here. We do have a, uh, we do have a chance of some pretty s uh, significant snow here towards the Sierra Nevadas here. It's a little bit of a tongue twist trying to say that. Significant snow in the Sierras. Uh, let me know if you can uh, handle saying that 10 times fast in the comments. Anyway, though, uh, we do have some signals here for some wintry precipitation over here. Sierras are one spot, and also the Rockies are another spot. Outside of that, I wouldn't be too concerned about anything, but this could be a bit of a problem. And then also, of course, over towards the southern half of California here, with the atmospheric river going on. There is some chance of flooding, but I think that threat will really start to become more prevalent as we get into the week. Next week here, we'll get into the details of that briefly in just a minute. But this is us going all the way into Monday morning. Look how strong that signal is. And this is a signal for um, winter storm severity index impacts here. And this is showing the likelihood of a moderate impact here. And we're almost maxed out here at this point. So I actually will out of curiosity because I haven't even checked this parameter we're seeing even potential for major to extreme impact so this could be a uh, pretty significant um, system going through the uh, Sierras here definitely been uh, having a surplus of precipitation over here for a while and it looks like with this trend that will continue to be the case here so this weekend should be uh, pretty active over there across the board there and then if we actually go ahead and look at the snowfall totals, that's also a really good reflection of that. Some places could see up to maybe five feet of snow, which is absolutely insane here. And then, of course, towards the Rockies, we could see another two to three feet possibly here as well. So, like I said, big, big system coming through the uh, western half of the U.S. here for sure. The way the current storm track is now, though, this will be working its way up towards Canada, so it'll be a big event for them. But areas further off to the east, you're really not going to see too much anything over the weekend here. At least as far as wintry precipitation is concerned. But if we go over to the severe side of things, much different story. We have a severe thunderstorm watch ongoing right now. And there's actually been a slight risk that's issued that has a hail driven threat with a hatched risk over here just to the west of San Antonio. So we could be seeing hail greater than two inches in diameter over here within the course of the next couple hours. And we also have a 5% wind threat that's pretty uh, widespread and then also a 2% tornado threat that's been widespread. And to a point that's even come to fruition because we actually have two tornado reports from earlier today just to the uh just to the northwest over here of or actually not northwest but to the south and east of Abilene here so this is a point of interest i keep on wanting to say north and west of dallas but i knew there was a city closer but that's really besides the point we're gonna have a uh, relatively active evening over here right now if you actually take a look at the radar you can see the storms ongoing here and you can see the line of storms as well so far at the moment, no tornado warnings, but we do have a multitude of severe thunderstorm warnings that are increasing in numbers and coverage here as well. So definitely want to keep an eye on that. So now we're going to go ahead and take a look at Saturday and Sunday, which have marginal risk. And we're going to take a look at the threat for tomorrow, but that's really not going to be the day that interests me beyond today. Really, Sunday kind of interests me more, and we'll look at the models and you'll kind of get an idea of what I'm talking about here. So 2% and 5% threats for both wind, hail, and tornadoes tomorrow. Threat will be a little bit more isolated, mainly going to be uh, uh, mostly uh, confined to Houston at this point. There are some areas that could be a little bit, there are some threats, such as the wind threat, that could be a little bit close towards areas like Austin. But I don't expect this to be anything significant or widespread at this time. If something does change, I'll let you know. But the day three threat, here we are starting to look at Florida. And I do think that this marginal risk could even be upgraded to a slight risk. And I wouldn't be surprised to also see maybe a little bit of a extension of this area pushed to maybe north, north of Orlando here. 
it could be just a little bit south but orlando might be on the fringe of this marginal risk and then i think areas a little further to the south where it's going to be warmer a slight risk isn't out of the question here and i think with this threat we could see both damaging winds and tornadoes on the increase here i think the hail threat is going to be rather low at this point though so here we are we're going to go ahead and take a look at a couple of different levels of the atmosphere this is towards the mid to upper levels 500 millibars this is getting a good idea of what our storm system looks like right now and from what we see right now and this is going with today's threat the thing to make note of here is not much in the way of kinematics to work with and not to mention also just there's not much forcing available very weak forcing right now so the trigger for these storms it's there but it's not going to be anything that gets those discrete supercells going here if we had a low that was a little bit more organized like this different story and then here's our little area of evidence here for potential storm development i do think that the threat might be earlier in the day and then from that point we may see a little bit of a transition over to maybe louisiana but even then i wouldn't put too much into that right now just heading into sunday here and this look is kind of interesting to me because whenever you see this kind of try to spread apart like that, this does have the look of a little bit of convergence and divergence going on here. Could mean that maybe a few discrete cells are possible here with these little blotches in there. And then there may also be a line of storms to finish out the evening here possibly. But there's not a really good signal at this level of the atmosphere. So we could potentially have two rounds of severe storms towards the southern half of the Florida Peninsula just of their of what their significance or violence may be is to be questioned though still at this point so starting to get more so into that uh, low level of the atmosphere and looking more towards the tornado threat in particular we're uh, mainly going to be trying to hash out just what exactly we could see in regards to the threat over the next couple of days so one thing to make note of again is going to be the line of storms that we see developing now further to the south they may hold a little bit more intensity and as a result we could see some early morning severe storms over here towards houston maybe and then eventually maybe towards the uh texas louisiana line for the most part i do see this fizzling out after a while and then eventually like i said before florida becomes a point of interest and really I think southern Florida looks like the most interesting area in particular. Also seeing that low level jet towards 40 knots is a pretty decent signal in regards to potential tornado genesis. It wouldn't surprise me if a few tornadoes did emerge from this, but for the most part, I don't expect too, too much out of this. But of course, Florida always has a special way of uh, surprising people. We call it Florida magic. We do see maybe evidence for an additional line of storms towards the evening, but I don't think the atmosphere is going to quite recover enough to get it going here. And we'll kind of see this reflected in the next couple of models here in particular. Have the Mixler Cape for today. Pretty, uh, pretty good instability considering this time of year. Usually during this time of year, it's harder to get instability going. And usually as a result, we don't get a lot of we don't get quite as much in the way of severe weather but this could be an exception towards february things do start to transition a bit here and here's the instability left out ahead of that line of storms as we go into tomorrow morning and then a little bit of remnant instability hanging around and then it's when we get towards florida we start to see a little bit of an uptrend here starting to get above a thousand joules per kilogram so we're hitting the threshold here folks and then as we get later into the overnight hours eventually that gets out of here but that first wave just doesn't really have a lot of instability but that second wave of course and this is why i think that there still could be a secondary round but i think this will be more linear that first round could be uh, discrete but based off of how this uh model's kind of reflecting upon the the uh, data that we have available looks like we're going to be right on we're going to have that instability right on the fringe of the line and on the front here's the sounding of the said of the uh, setup here like i said it's not really an impressive looking one in regards to the uh, kinematics here but it's still sufficient enough to where we could have a hazard type of tornado 
could still be a little bit of hail possible. Like I said, it's nothing that's like groundbreaking. It's nothing that's going to tell you, okay, this is going to be an extreme tornado outbreak or anything like that. But a few are possible. That's really the point we're trying to drive home here at this point. If we go to reflectivity here with this, we're going to pretty much be able to see everything from, let's say, tomorrow onward. So here's that line of storms coming in tomorrow morning over to here towards Houston. It's a decent little line here from the looks of it too on reflectivity. It does hold its strength decently as it goes to Louisiana and then eventually it starts to fizzle out a bit. But this is still going to cause quite a bit in the way of heavy rain over here towards the southeast. Mississippi and Alabama getting into the action. Eventually Georgia does too. And then here we go looking into tomorrow into Sunday morning and here's some of those discrete cells that I'm concerned about. It's the confluence band here and then after that it looks like we start to see an increase in activity with the secondary line here. So this is an evening setup and I was thinking this was looking going to look a little bit more linear. It may not. So hmm. It's a little something to think about there. And that might be something I might even live stream depending on how things play out here. So if you're over here towards Florida, definitely keep an eye on Sunday. There could be a few discrete cells here. There's a threat for tornadoes here. It's not necessarily a high threat, but it's not a 0% chance. And then as we continue to go on here, we'll go ahead and take a look at the temperatures ahead for everybody else. Like I said, for the most part, Towards the uh, eastern half of the U.S. here with that ridge in play, we're going to have those above average temperatures. You're going to see that reflected here pretty well as we go through the afternoon tomorrow here. We got those above average temperatures across the board. It's still a little chilly up here, but definitely warmer than what it should be for February for a lot of us here. Over towards the south, of course, we're getting into those 50s, those 60s, even a few 70s. Those 70s are most prevalent across southern Texas and, of course, towards Florida as well. And then, of course, out west is where it's a little bit more chilly, especially towards those higher elevations. So we go towards Sunday. Here's that warm air starting to really kick in. And this is another thing that has me kind of concerned is we're getting into those 70s over here towards the southern part of the peninsula of Florida here. So Miami, Orlando definitely need to be on the lookout there. That coupled in with the dew points in play, it's going to create some problems for sure here. So the moisture returns are another thing that I'm going to be looking at, of course. We do get some good ones for the tonight's setup even. So like I said, those storms are going to have a decent bit of fuel to keep themselves going here, coupled with the uh, instability available as well. And then, of course, here is that moisture surge coming in as we get in towards Florida. And then right around 20Z is when I'm expecting those dew points to be around the mid-60s here across the board. So it's going to be warm and humid over here so prime type of setup for uh, some stronger thunderstorms over here not as not anything unusual for you guys but the threat for severe weather does exist that being said here the last thing we're going to look at is the quantitative precipitation across the board here and we'll get on out of here and the main thing to make note of here is over towards let's say Louisiana, parts of Miss, a good chunk of Mississippi and Alabama here is where we're going to have some the most impressive rainfall totals. I wouldn't be surprised to see some three inch to four inch totals possibly here as well. And then some precipitation is also going to make it in towards Kansas and Nebraska here. So that could be pretty impressive as well here. So like I said, flooding, not a big issue at the moment here, but definitely potential exists with this there. We do also have to keep in mind of the uh, the atmospheric river that's over here towards the southern part of Cali here where we have some even more impressive rainfall totals of up to about five to six inches possibly some places maybe even pushing towards 10 before the weekend is out. And this is also kind of reflected on our excessive rainfall outlooks here. Today the uh, threat's marginal but as we go towards the following day we have that slight risk in effect for both of these areas and then as we go towards day three we look over to the west here towards LA and areas off to the north and west here adjacently like St. Maria, uh, Lompoc, Santa Barbara we're actually under a moderate risk for excessive rainfall here so flash flooding could be a big problem so it could be a busy day Sunday here 
for not just these guys but also for us because we may be covering this and maybe also the severe weather threat as well to the south so that being said pretty busy weekend ahead here just uh make sure you're staying weather aware if you happen to be in an area of interest whether it's winter weather or severe weather and if you're having a calm weekend where the temperatures are going to be warm definitely enjoy it because there is chances that we will be seeing another there's a high likelihood actually that we will be seeing a pattern flip very soon that being said hope to see you guys again soon but that being said ugh, i cannot speak you guys take care have a good evening it's been a long day on my end so i'm gonna get out of here it's been tired metalhead weatherman enjoy the rest of your friday